this is not perfect. This is not high end. This is not top of the line, but it's actually pretty good. And for the money, I think this should be your first drone. John here guys, and today we're talking about the JJRC Huron. Now, look, this is a small micro-sized um, gimbal carrying GPS drone. And look, let's just stop beating around the bush and call it what it is. This is a clone of the DJI Spark. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. The DJI Spark is, yes, it is the lower end of DJI's drone offerings. It is the lesser of all of their drones, but it's also the most economical. But in order to buy a DJI Spark with the Fly More combo, which is what you want, that includes the remote or transmitter and an extra battery, you have to spend roughly $500 after taxes. That's still quite a bit for a lot of people to stomach for their first taste at drone flying. After all, is this gonna be like that time that you got into, you know, food drying? Is it gonna be like the time where you bought that, you know, $2,000 mountain bike thinking you're gonna go mountain cruising? Is it gonna be like the time that you had that custom bowling ball made um, only to throw two strikes in 10 games. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Um, so if you're looking to buy your first drone, is this the right one? And I'm gonna say right now, this is not perfect. This is not high end. This is not top of the line, but it's actually pretty good. And for the money, I think this should be your first drone. Now let's talk about some of the features. The goal of this thing um, was to essentially copy the DJI Spark. And in some ways it was successful, other ways not so successful. And if you've never owned a DJI um, drone before, let me tell you, the secret sauce of DJI and why they're so good. It's not really the hardware, it's the software. DJI software is so good. It's so intuitive, it's so user-friendly. And the GPS lock hovering features built on the transmitter and software that you run on your cell phone, as well as the software built into the drone itself are second to none. Um, and this, you know, does an okay attempt at replicating it and it's not all there but for a beginner drone pilot do you actually need those features can you dip your toe into the amazingly cool and refreshing drone waters at a price point closer to two hundred dollars pretty pretty good that's the question that we're really looking to answer by looking at this product now what comes with the drone is not a full set of extra props, but two extra props. So you have two spare props. Comes with a power cable. It comes with the charger that plugs into a USB micro, which I really like because I love to be able to charge this off of a power bank. You can fly for almost forever. It comes with two of these batteries. Now in my flying, I found the batteries to last uh, you know, 15 to 18 minutes, maybe 20, depending on if you're flying slow or you're just hovering. It's very nice. These are clearly modeled after DJI batteries. They just slide right in. It has a power indicator on the battery itself, which is nice. So you can look at a glance and I can see, oh, this is the one I already flew. This is the one that's fully charged. So let's plug it in. It turns on exactly like a DJI. What you want to do is quick press the button and then hold it. You'll see and hear these familiar tones um, while the thing boots up. At the same time, you'll want to take your transmitter while it's booting. Now this should be on level ground. Turn it on. 
and then you would want to activate the app on your cell phone. Now, let's get something out of the way right now. The app is not very easy to find. You would think by looking at the box that you would want to search for JJRC. You'd want to search for Heron uh, on the Apple App Store. And I searched for that and I found a plethora of apps. None of them were the right one. So here's how you find the app. <laughs> you get this little instruction booklet and you point your camera at this QR code and it'll launch the app in the App Store, download it, you're good to go. It took me a little while to figure that out. I don't usually use these QR code things, uh, but when I finally thought of that as a last resort, it worked great. So maybe I need to look at those QR codes more often. The way that you're gonna arm it is once you're connected to the app, you're gonna hold your sticks down to the outside, down to the outside on both sides, and that will arm it. And okay, on camera, I actually loosened this gimbal stick to the point where it came out. It just pushes in. So I didn't break it, guys, in case you're wondering. So these are, <laughs> that'll bring me to the next point. This is better than a toy grade controller, but it's not quite DJI quality. Now keep in mind, the available controller for a Spark is not as good as say a Mavic or a Phantom or definitely not an Inspire. So the bar is actually kind of low and the fact that this isn't perfect is probably okay. It just has some minimal buttons on here. You have your little knob that lowers the gimbal up and down, your return to home button, um, your record button for the camera. And so I wonder if that means I'm recording right now. Let's see if we can connect to the app. So when you want to connect to your DJI drone, you have to do a couple of things. Nope, not DJI, JJRC. When you want to connect your JJRC drone, a couple of things. You got to go onto the Wi-Fi, select the drone Wi-Fi, not the controller the drone one. The controller should be bound already. So you're going to give it a few seconds to be able to connect to that drone's Wi-Fi network. Once you're connected, you'll launch the app and it should connect. This is one of the things that I found didn't work as good as DJI. It usually took me two or three times of running through this process till it would actually connect itself, which is a little annoying but that's one of the shortcomings that you have to deal with at this price point. The other thing is um, this gimbal is actually pretty good. The footage, I would say, is probably one of the best things about it. It looks good, it looks great. Um, these props are very similar to what comes on DJI. As a drone pilot, I'm eyeballing this. This looks to be about a 1306 or a 1407 size motor. If you wanna know more about drone motor sizes, check out the link up in the corner. It'll explain all about different drone motor sizes. These are similar to DJI's props. They kind of fold in the middle, allowing it to be stored easier. They're very light. Uh, they spin very fast, and that's gonna give you a nice, um, smooth and stable flight. Now, one of the other shortcomings of this thing compared to a DJI is a DJI once it gets satellite lock, meaning that this communicates to US and Russian satellites out in orbit and tells it its location in space. So unlike a racing drone, which is like fully manual on a GPS enabled drone, when you let go of this controller, it should hold its position wherever it is. Now, if you have it hold here, you'll actually see this one drift a little bit, just a few inches. If a gust of wind blows, it'll go over just so slightly and then it'll work itself back. Um, I find that DJI drones hold their position a little bit better. When you're moving, this thing tends to sway a little bit more. If you're in a, a maneuver where you're going um, you know, fairly fast, you stop. It kind of does a little bit of a flattening out. So that's gonna affect your footage. And there goes the neighbor's AC, so I apologize for the sound now. But those shortcomings are okay. The gimbal on this works quite good. You can see it, you know, keeping itself level for the most part right here. 
Um, the lights on the bottom are the same type of colors as DJI. So all in all, this is a pretty good beginner option and it only costs $200. I think that's the right price point that people are comfortable spending to, like I said, dip their toe into the drone game. So I really don't recommend a DJI Spark. Now you can go and find a DJI Spark for 300, sometimes $350, but keep in mind, that's probably just the drone itself. It doesn't include the remote, doesn't include extra batteries. It only comes with one battery. So this is really a more of a comparison to the DJI Spark Fly More Combo, which costs closer to 500. So I think if you wanna get your feet wet with a drone, Start with this thing. See if you like it. If you find yourself flying, if you want something that's a little bit smoother, a little bit faster, a little bit better in every way, then you can decide to upgrade to say a Mavic. I'd almost say with this being an option on the market, go ahead and skip the Spark altogether. And if drone flying is not for you, it's not for everyone, then you're only out 200 bucks. Not bad guys, not bad. Let's check out some footage from this thing and you tell me in the comments what you think. What was your first drone that you ever got? My first drone was a little tiny Hubson um, thing that I could fly indoors. Next, I got a SEMA X5C. Now that was a targeted purpose because I wanted to get a DJI Phantom and I wanted to learn how to fly a drone on something cheap. SEMA X5C is like 50 bucks um, before I graduated up to something closer to five, $600, like the Phantom 3 that I had was. So it's cool to be able to have a nice camera drone um, when I don't wanna get some HD footage with my racing drones, or if I want something that's perfectly smooth that I can just hold and get footage in the air. It's also nice to be able to point straight down. You know, you can angle the camera down. I'm gonna do that right here. Check this out. See how that camera is pointing down now? Very cool. Now let's point it back up. It's very nice to be able to do that. My racing drones can't do that. I can look down for about one second if I go up into the air and do a dive. <laughs> you know, this can just hover looking down. So pretty cool, guys. What do you think in the comments? Thanks. Thank you.